please welcome to the program, <laughs> Susan Kent. Thanks so much for having me. This is great. Well, thank you for coming on. You were, you were a little shocked there. so. <laughs> uh, well, every time I turn on my Zoom now, because one of my really close friends made her 20 years in AA, and I was invited to the meeting over Zoom, which was like a huge honor. But, of course, you have to have everything turned off because, you know, everybody wants to have anonymity and stuff. And so now my, my iPad is just, like, addicted to never having the screen on and never having the sound on. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry about that really helpful in pitch meetings i would think yeah yeah oh i look so professional <laughs> oh hi yeah hey yes this is my ho- my co-host mr green here hello um, hi mr green so yeah so uh spinster came out today on itunes canada and of mm-hmm. course uh it stars chelsea peretti and yourself now when i heard that this film is like it's called spinster it stars chelsea peretti and yourself, I'm like, oh, this is going to be a balls to the wall comedy. And then I watched it. I was like, oh no, it's like a personal reflection drama with some comedy yeah. in it. So, yeah, was that something that attracted you about the piece? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, definitely. But the first thing that attracted me about it was that Chelsea was going to be in it because I'm such a huge fan of her. So I was like, I'll, I'll play the sandwich that she makes. You know what I mean? <laughs> And the fact that I actually got to do, you know, work opposite her was really amazing. Um, I, yeah, I loved the themes. Uh, a big theme for me, the th- thing that I loved most was this idea of how we isolate ourselves to kind of maybe protect ourselves from pain. And the more you open up, sometimes the, well, I think actually every time when you open up to other people that your world opens up. And that kind of what is what happens with um, Gabby, Chelsea's character. Yeah, no, totally. And what I, I really, because I feel like yeah, it's an interesting story of her self-discovery of basically figuring out that she, you know, she has a good life and she doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. need a relationship to make it full. But mm-hmm. what the parts that really hit me were the the stuff between you and her about the the change in friendship, you know, the single friend and the married friend with kids and how that dynamic changes. Cause that's happened to me and my friends for over like the past decade and a half, like the dynamic changes. And it's sort of like the people that can adapt to it can. And, but then a lot of times friends drift apart because of it. Yeah, it's true. I've always been the Gabby in, in uh, the dynamic between myself and another friend. Like I've, I felt like the person who um, who needs the help, who needs the assistance, who maybe like I felt a little bit arrested in in my development, my development, I guess. Like I, I everybody else was doing well before I was getting a sniff at it. And and so I really um, I think that's I think it's something we feel even even when we're doing all right. You know, it's um, it's an interesting thing how. Uh, we sort of use each other as yardsticks. Um, but what's great in the film is that they sort of find their way back to one another. Yeah, yeah there, there's, there's, totally. a, there's several scenes with you guys and you and some of them, like the, there's one particular uh, after what Andrew was talking about and you guys are like reconnecting. And it was just like, I was watching it and I was, and I was just thinking about like how how interesting that is for somebody for people who are in their you know essentially like late 30s early 40s mm-hmm. to be reconnecting and i see that with some of my friends when they have because there's some of their children are now getting old enough that they can they feel comfortable leaving them alone and going to a babysitter and having that night out and reconnecting and it's just it's just interesting like to see that like for yourself as you mentioned you're usually the gabby in the situation have you had mm-hmm. those experiences with some of your friends where you've gotten to have that that night out again uh, well, some of my girlfriends still were wild, even after they had kids, so the night outs didn't stop for many of them. Uh, um, um, uh, yeah, I, I think, I don't know that I've lost touch with any of my friends for those reasons. I was unemployed, and then one of my friends hired me to take care of her kids, which I was going to do anyways. And then she was like, no, 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 I, 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 
I want to pay you, which was great because I was in Toronto and I, I had nothing and I, I love those kids anyways. And it was really kind of her because I think she knew like, like she, she did it in such a way that I didn't feel weird about it at all. It was totally right. great. And now I have this kind of lifelong bond with these guys, these two boys who are now teenagers. And when we see each other, we like run to each other and give each other a hug. It's the best. Cause I don't have any kids of my own. My sisters did all the child having in, in my right. family. Yeah. So, so yeah, you really are kind of like Gabby in this case, because uh, like her connection to her niece and everything, like it's just, so like when you look at your character then, like the character you're playing in the film, mm -hmm. who doesn't sound anything like who you are as a person necessarily, you know, mm -hmm. what, for you though, when you're playing that, like, did you talk, like, how did you come to that character and find that, uh, you know, because obviously you don't have the same life experiences to draw from. Yeah, I was actually a little frightened at first. Uh, I was, I, I read it and I was like, this person is far more together than I have ever felt. Um, but I just, I, I kept reading it and I kept reading it. And there's, it's funny because it may not be an exact sort of um, uh, reflection of the relationship, but there are relationships that I have with um, some people where I do feel like I actually they come to me for advice, which is a terrible waste of their time, but they do it. And uh, so I could, I could relate to being the person who um, maybe seems like the one who has it together within the friendship. And then the funny thing about all, all of this stuff with, you know, acting is you just read it and you read it and you read it and you learn it and you learn it and you learn it and, you learn it and, you, and, and it, and it sort of comes in at different levels at different times. And then you just, meet the person you're doing the scene with and you hope for the best. Right. And, uh, and it worked. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. dynamic is something yeah, yeah. that you just, you kind of created on the spot. And um, the first scene that we shot myself and Chelsea uh, was the one where she has me over and we have a sleepover. Oh, and wow. yeah. So we, we had, we had had one meeting before, but she had done meetings all day long. She had just flown in. She came with her 11 month old. She was an absolute trooper. And so um, that was kind of a, a, a quick meeting. You know, we didn't really get to hang out a, a lot. And so then we went in to, to shoot this scene. And at one point we just started, we were just chatting in between takes and we started cracking up at something and we'd already covered one angle for, for one part of the scene because <clears throat> If I remember correctly, um, uh, the beginning of the scene is shot a certain way and then the end of the scene is shot in a different way. So we sort of wrapped out the beginning half of the scene. And it was during the second half of the scene that we started to laugh at something. And we, and we suddenly had this thing. We were like, oh, God, I wish we could go back and start and do the entire scene again. But it was really nice to, to have that thing click right. between us. And um, yeah. Well, yeah. totally. We just got some email. We got an email in from Bryce H who says, Hey geeks, great guest tonight. What a talent rock on Muppets. Here's to Mr. Green's new spud restaurant. So Bryce, thank you for listening to the entire episode. Cause you covered all the segments. Good job. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Green. I hey, you know, know about your new Spuds restaurant. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, I, I wear many hats on the show. And uh, so this is the, the, the newest. You're wearing no hat right now. No, no, he, he, he ruining the illusion. For I me. personally <laughs> think that I personally think that Dartmouth would be other, a great guys. place. <laughs> Dartmouth would be a great place for you to try out the Spuds restaurant. Personally, I, I, you, you know what? You, 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 I, I was just going to say is that in Dartmouth it might be a little too on the nose. You know, <laughs> you know, maybe go somewhere where there's not as many potato fans, and open that. Really, you want to go where there's not potato fans? Well, you're. It's already done. No, you got to open them up. You got to. You got to bring people in, Larry. Like Susan, That's are you a, a potato fan? A terrible business plan to go find a place where there are no potato fans. You're no, like you got to make the, the potato sea. fans. You got to make the potato fans. I can't help it. It's in my genes. Oh. As, as, a, as, as a newfie, you can't not love <clears throat> potatoes. You're from Newfoundland. Yes, actually, I was. I I, I was born in St. John's, and mm. uh, I have relatives in Corner Brook that I used to go wow. there all the time. So, so we've been treading the same paths. Yes, it was. I was. I was. I was like, wow. Okay, 
All, yeah, because I was we, born in St. John's as well, and then I, I went out to Cornerbrook when I was like 12, 13. Uh-huh. See, I, I was living in Ontario at that point, and I would go back every summer. So, there you go. Which was so much fun for an Ontario kid, I bet. You were like, where is the mall? <laughs> <laughs> I liked going down because it was the only time I saw that side of my family, right? Because they didn't always come up. So yeah. it was, it was plus, plus Newfoundland is great to visit. It's so beautiful in the summertime. Because yeah, there's those yeah. two days, there's those two days where it's warm. So that's right. Yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, <laughs> nice place to visit. Yeah, as long as you go there the first week of August, you're okay. <laughs> now, uh, of it's course, Susan, uh, you know you, of course, are known for some other projects out there. Here, you you've been involved with two pretty big Canadian franchises. One of which, uh, the Trailer Park Boys, you were in seasons uh, 11 and 12, and you've done some work on the animated series. As Susan, Ricky's on again, off again, girlfriend. Um, now, have you heard the crazy fan theory that some fans think that you're just playing a fictionalized version of yourself because the character's name is Susan? Excuse me? Yeah? Can you tell me why my children are so covered in dirt and exhausted from shoveling and running all day? This is supposed to be a hockey school. That's it. That is crazy. That is <laughs> I don't know I don't know where people are going from making an, a line from point A to B there, I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> that is a stretch. Yeah, I'd say so. Susan. <laughs> it was really cool. I went in in season eleven. I, I auditioned for woman number one. Right. And I was like, do we swear on the show? You can say yeah, whatever yeah. you fucking want. I was like, fuck it. I'll audition for woman number one. Uh, I love this show. So I did. And then they were like, you booked it. Is there anything you want? Like my agent said. And I was like, can I have, be like Miss Woman number one? Like, can I have like a name? And they were like, nope. <laughs> so I didn't have a name. And I went in and we had such a blast. John Dunsworth was directing the great mm. genius D John Dunsworth and we did I can't remember how many takes we did but we changed it up every time and Rob and I had worked together beforehand and I love him and we just it was just like a magic three hours or two hours however long it took to shoot this scene and I left feeling so great and I was like oh man I got to do trailer park boys how cool is that and then the following year they rang me up and asked me if I wanted to come back, and I was floating, honestly. That's awesome. Yeah, no, that is pretty yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, and yeah, you got to work with John Dunsworth in his final season, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. He but was in, he's in, incredible and so kind, too. Like, he just, he was, he's always going around asking people if they needed anything or getting someone a tea or a water or you know, giving up his seat and then also being like the most hilarious human being. No, oh, that's cool. That's very cool. Um, I will say uh, you do uh, your catchphrase on the show of you can suck my cock. That was, that was, that was class A. That, definitely <laughs> <laughs> that actually came, it came out of the, it came out of the season 11. Just yeah. Like yeah. Season. Yeah. That was like one of the, the third line you said or something like that. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did I, I say thought cock, I thought I said dick. Why don't you eat my dick? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a, a yeah, a personal preference. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. No, there's, a, there's apparently there's a taste difference. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, of course, the other big yeah. franchise. One is like, the classy choice, and then there's a raucous choice. <laughs> which one is which? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you choose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so um, the other franchise you're involved of, with, of course, is This Hour is 22 Minutes. Uh, yeah. So season 28. Wow. 28. Are you, yeah. When are you, are you guys going to be starting filming soon? Is there special protocols in place or... They're working all that stuff out now. It, there will be like masks and, and as much distancing as possible. Um, 
they will, I'm pretty sure, because both Trent and Mark live outside of uh, Nova Scotia, so they'll probably come in two weeks beforehand in quarantine. Um, and I think the first show is slotted for sometime in October, but I can't, I can't remember the exact date. Okay, cool. So it's going to be it's going to be coming out on time then. All right. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's going to be wild and I think a lot of people will be a lot of our brilliant writers will be working remotely, uh which is probably they're probably very happy about that cuz they can actually be at home with their cats and their loved ones and <laughs> and uh and and write from afar. Uh so yeah, it's going to be it'll be uh it'll be a different one. Is this going to be the first project that you're coming back to since uh, the quarantine started? Oh yeah, I guess so. I mean, I'm working on so like I'm uh, I'm writing something, but it'll be yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, that's going to be. Uh, I, I'm sure that's going to yeah, be. Yeah, I know. It's like a huge, totally weird. Um, it's uh, it's it's been it's been a long time, but it's normally a long. It's normally a long time. So I might be doing something else uh, in September, but that's all, you know, until I've signed on the dotted line. It's not, it's not a for sure. Right, right. definitely. Well, I look forward a, to see a, what- It looks pretty good, but yeah. That's nice. cool. Well, I look forward to see what the writers come up with for you guys for this season of 22 Minutes because there is so much stuff to work with now. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. I have to take a break, you know, because um, because um, I write as well uh, on the show, and um, I have to when we finish shooting because it's news twenty four hours. Like I wake up in the morning and I have tea and I watch the news, and then it's like whatever you know news I can get on my phone, and it's it's a constant um, uploading of everything crazy that's happening in the world, and then trying to spin that. And because uh, because we're week to week, it's like it's a it's you can't kind of sleep on it. And when it's over, I just like throw my phone as far away from it, me as I can get it and just like quit news for a little while. Because there's certain times like I remember I was I was uh, writing with my friend Bob Kerr, who's a brilliant stand up. We were working on I something went to college with Bob. You didn't. I, I did. I did. Oh my God. He's the yeah, best. He's actually in a few short films I made as well. But anyways, continue. Oh my God. Sorry. Is that true? That's so yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> we met at Starbucks for a change of scenery to work on something. And, and we were both like, he was like, do you, are, do you feel depressed? And I was like, yeah, do you feel depressed? And it was like halfway through the fall. And we were like, it's, it's just depressing to have to watch the news all the time. Kathy Jones makes this joke about like how when the world finally blows up because of World War III, because people are always like, oh, it must be so fun. And it is fun. Don't get me wrong. But her joke is that like our heads will be blowing into outer space and someone's head will fly by and go like, you're going to get some good jokes out of this. <laughs> As we all hurtle into space, into certain death. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sounds about right in 2020 yeah, though, for sure. I'd say so. I'd yeah. say so. Definitely. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Well, Susan, I want to thank you for coming on the program. It's been a delight talking with you and I hope people get to check out Spinster. It's really uh, good. Available on iTunes Canada and Vimeo on demand. And uh, yeah. And I look forward to more 22 minutes and whatever this possible project you might be working on is. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's really been a pleasure for me too to talk to you both. Thanks a lot. Have a good night. And oh, one last question. Did any other hummingbirds show up in your backyard? There were three. There were three all together. Nice. I mean, like we, we've been talking about getting a hummingbird feeder for a long time. We got a regular bird feeder and then these like burly rats showed up and they were so like brazen that Andy went down and one of them actually did a standoff with him. It was the cutest because I was watching from the window and I could see this rat just like stare him down. And then he, he turned around and he came back and he's like, the rat, rat, won't, rat won't leave. And so we had to take down that feeder because it was bringing in. I mean, we had so many beautiful birds, but now it's like, I guess maybe we can do a hummingbird feeder because it's like liquid and it won't l land seeds all over the ground yeah. for those rats. Yeah. Listen, I'm all about, you know, the rats can, I'm all live and let live when it comes to rats, but. He was kind of freaked out, so. 
No, fair enough, fair enough. Well, I hope that uh, you get to enjoy more hummingbirds as well <laughs> on this you. fine evening. Have yourself a great night. Yeah, you too. Bye, Susan. I'll see ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.